Often in today's gospel, this text is used to rival the saints. For instance, many would argue that St. John the Baptist is greater than St. Joseph, but it shows a clear lack of understanding of the scripture. For it says, our Lord says, that there was none born of woman greater than St. John the Baptist. It does not declare as to the final state of his holiness, for scripture also tells us of that. What our Lord is referring to is here is that amongst those of the old dispensation, there was none greater than John the Baptist, but the least born in the kingdom of God, that is, those claimed by Christ in baptism are greater than he, and it does not declare as to the state of their holiness. That will be determined how each and every one responds to the Lord's message. That is precisely why St. John the Baptist is a great saint, because he did all that God had required him to do. And today we honor a man who was converted to the Catholic faith, St. Juan Diego, and he truly became one of those who was great in the kingdom of God, both in his baptism and his life, for upon his conversion, he would be used by the Immaculate Virgin Mother of God to bring about the end of human carnage in the Aztec culture. Despite the attempt of, 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 modern, of modernity and all to justify the human sacrifice and all the depraved practices of the Aztec culture, we know full well that anywhere human life is suffering from, from that degree, then the devil is very active. And so we learn, as Pope John Paul II pointed out in, his, in the canonization homily, that what proves the message of Our Lady of Guadalupe is that that message endured. And indeed, Our Lady started with one humble man, St. Juan Diego. He went to the bishop and began to deliver the message. And then it was simply he, he because the message was first rejected. But he would persevere and ultimately, through his cooperation, a change would take place in the Aztec culture. One that on, with, in cooperating with the Mother of God, St. Juan Diego would initiate. And so it was ultimately by his great prayers and his works that he united all to the mission of the Immaculate. Because as the Pope pointed out, the mission of the Immaculate and the mission of Christ are one and the same. And the fruit is determined by whether that message in the end wins out. And <clears throat> so in the Aztec culture, the untold human carnage would eventually be stopped because for the most part, that land would become converted to the kingdom of Christ. And so in their baptism, they would all become great. And then through, through prayer and through, and through their works for Christ, they would show themselves worthy of that gift that they had received in their baptism. And so St. Juan Diego in the message of Our Lady of Guadalupe has much to teach us in our own, in our own, in our own day and in our own age. For we know that the slaughter of the innocents that took place in the Aztec culture has been surpassed by the slaughter of the in innocents in our own culture. And indeed, it has transpired not merely to the enemies whom the Aztecs would catch, a, would, ca would catch and slaughter in order to appease their gods, but it has, it has en encompassed the whole of human society. Indeed, it can do, be truly said that from the first moment of conception until natural death, there is not a soul who is safe in our, cult in our culture and in our age. For we not only have abortion and infanticide, but we have euthanasia and the attempt to destroy all those whom this society de 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 deems not necessary. That is, if one is born with a form of retail Retardation, they too are put off to the side and ultimately there is an effort to seek to eliminate them from this life. And so we must always assess our culture by the reality of the situation, not by the sentimentality of what we would like to think it is. And so we too are called by Our Lady to cooperate with her, for if she stopped the slaughter in the Aztec culture, if she stopped the slaughter of the Roman Empire, 
she can also stop the slaughter of the new empires and their assault on the human family because every assault on the human family is initiated by Satan and when that is destroyed, it is initiated by the Immaculate Mother of God. And so St. Juan Diego would come to know full well this message and most especially he would come to know that which the lady reminded him, that she held him in the bosom of her heart and she, and she truly was the one who would protect him. And so let us go forth like St. Juan Diego, not fearing our culture and those who would seek to destroy life from its very beginning to its very end, but let us always remember, strengthened by the mother of God, we too can go forth cooperating with her and ultimately transform a culture of death into a culture of life. And so she truly is the patroness of the, of, of the Americas, or as Pope John Paul II declared her, the Empress of the Americas. And so let us turn to our Empress and ask her to help us in this life in order that all of the Americas may enjoy eternal life with God at the, at the end. And so let us strive always to seek to imitate those saints, especially in their cooperation with the Mother of God, knowing that what determines whether we are successful is whether the message is initiated and carried out by the Mother of God. We are not even asked to fulfill everything in this life. We are only asked to give our all and to try, for ultimately the victory is the mother's, uh, Mother of God's, and she will determine the times and the place, uh, places. Let us only resolve to know that if we cooperate cooperate with her, we have helped in her mission to bring Christ to our, to our world, and when Christ reigns in the world, Satan does not. It is a very simple formula, and yet it is a very true formula, but it can only, it, but the reign of Satan can only be stopped by those who are willing ultimately to gain the marks of Christ in their own flesh. That is, those marks which they gain by the labors, by their ordinary labors of their daily life, and ultimately some gain them through the extraordinary call of martyrdom. But no matter how we are asked to gain the marks of Christ, let us always strive to cooperate knowing that each one will be precious to the mother of God and will be applied in accord to where she sees most fit for the conversion of the world and the perseverance in that grace until the end of time. And so let us always see Our Lady as Saint Juan Diego came to see her as the empress and the protector of life and that she, she protects life at all times and all places, even when it seems most unlikely Often what is lacking is not the efforts of the mother of God, but the cooperation of the mystical body. And perhaps that is the greatest mystery of the mystical body, that God has asked our cooperation to be in a certain sense essential to the mission both of he and his mother. If we were to ask or if we were to determine knowing ourselves, we would perhaps ascribe a mistake to God, but God does not mistakes. He knows, as scripture tells us, what he, what he is about. And if he has ordained it such, then it is in this manner that the maximum salvation of souls will occur. And so let us stand back and marvel at the mystery. And when we feel that we are incapable of entering into it, let us ask Our Lady to come to us with her maternal care and her maternal protection as she did with St. Juan Diego, always being with us, always protecting us so that we truly have nothing to fear and we gain that serenity of a child in its mother's arm who has nothing to fear. Even at the height of war, a child in its mother's arm is at peace. And so let us, as the war rages violently, remain in the fold of the Immaculate Virgin Mary, knowing that we will gain that peace that allows us to persevere in this life, even unto giving our lives for the defense of life, so that we may gain it for eternity in the life to come.